Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and there's a new version of Ledger Live out, so I'm going to walk you through the download and setup. We'll talk about the release notes, and I'm going to address some common questions people have about Ledger and wallets. So let's get started. So there's a new version of Ledger Live out. I'm going to walk you through the download and installation, and we'll talk about the release notes. I'm also going to cover some common questions. I get these questions almost on a daily basis, so I'm going to address these questions as we go through the setup. If you want to skip ahead to any of these questions, I've divided up this video into chapters. So you can go down and click on any of the time codes in the description, or you can just hover over the progress bar and you can see the different chapters I have the video divided up into. So let's jump in. First thing we'll do is launch our Ledger Live. All right, my Ledger Live is password protected. All right, if you don't have password protection on your Ledger Live desktop account and you would like it, you can simply go over to settings and just go down here to password lock. If you don't have a password lock on your Ledger Live application and you toggle that on, it'll simply ask you to enter a password and confirm it. And then after that, the next time you launch Ledger Live, you'll have the password lock. All right, so uh, now that we've got Ledger Live launched, notice that it has a alert bar at the top telling us to download the latest version. So we'll just click Download Update. And then the next thing is Install Now. All right, notice that my uh, Ledger Live quit and launched the installer and then uh, got the finish. Didn't take very long. And here are the release notes. Now, if you have a problem with the inline updater, for example, if you click download now and it just spins or it downloads and then when you click install now, it just spins. That can happen sometimes depending on your computer and your situation. If that does happen and you can't run the inline update, the solution is very simple. Just quit Ledger Live, go over to the Ledger homepage, Go over here to Apps and Services, click Ledger Live, download the app, whatever uh, platform you're on. In my case, it's Windows. It's going to download the latest installer for you. Notice it's the latest one, 2.46.0. Just drop that into your Downloads folder, and then you can run the update from here. Just make sure you quit your Ledger Live. Go ahead and run the installer with Ledger Live closed. And when you're done with that, you'll get back to this page and you can relaunch your Ledger Live. So every now and then the, the inline updater fails depending on your software configuration or the age of your computer. Things glitch out sometimes. All right, so let's go ahead and look at those release notes again. You can always get to them by going to the settings and the about and then just click on the details here. All right, so it looks like they've added Filecoin support and they've also added uh, display banners to the account pages to let you know if they've been updated. Also, there were some minor bug fixes. I'm wondering if they fixed the issue with Cardano tokens. The prices of Cardano tokens were not showing up properly, uh, so we can explore that as well. We'll hit continue here. All right, and then we're back in our interface. Notice now that I'm running the latest version of Ledger Live. Uh, that's the software, the desktop-based software. And notice also that my manager does not have a little dot. That little dot usually indicates there's something that needs to be updated on the device. And we can go over to the manager, and I'll just quickly demonstrate. In order to get into the manager, you need to have your device connected and the pin entered. All right, once you've got your device connected and you've entered your pin and unlocked it, it should open up the uh, device manager for you. You'll notice that you'll also have a little message there asking you to allow Ledger Manager. You simply click both buttons to uh, confirm that. All right, notice here it's telling me I'm running the latest version of the firmware and I don't have any app updates. If you have any app updates, they'll show up here along the top, just telling you you need to get the apps updated. That's 
That's talking about the little apps that run on your device. They are basically uh, how the wallet is controlled. So let's address that first question that I always get, and that is, is it safe to update my Ledger software and hardware? And the answer is yes, it is safe. You should always keep your software up to date and keep your device in tip-top shape by making sure that it's up to date. I know a lot of people somehow get their device set up, they get some crypto in there, and then they get terrified. They're worried that they're going to do something wrong and they're going to lose all their crypto. That's not going to happen. The first thing you need to remember is when you set up your device and you write down your 24-word backup phrase, that is your backup. So if the device is damaged, lost, or stolen, you can always get a new device and use that backup phrase to restore all of your wallets and regain access to all of your crypto. So don't get terrified that you're going to do something wrong or somehow get hacked if you update your Ledger software. As long as you're doing it from within Ledger Live, you're good. Let's compare this to a race car. So if you're a race car driver and you're out there on the circuit racing your car, do you ever think to yourself, gee, I wonder if it's safe to put gas in my car or replace my brake pads or change my oil? Of course not. You know that you need to keep your race car in tip top shape. Yes, it's terrifying and yes, it's exhilarating, but there's no reason to not keep your car up to date and in tip top shape. The same goes for your Ledger software and your Ledger device. Never be afraid to keep it updated. Now, if you get an email telling you that you need to follow a sketchy link to upgrade your software, that's a different story. That's phishing software. But in the normal course of events, when you're using Ledger Live, please make sure you keep it updated and then go over to Manager periodically and make sure that you've got Manager up to date. So the release notes mention some updated account banners. You don't really see that in Bitcoin, but if you go over to some uh, other projects like Stellar, you'll notice they have this thing here powered by Stellar Development Foundation, and you can get some more info about uh, what's going on with the development team. Ledger Live is open source software, so a lot of the developers contribute to the Ledger Live software, in this case, the Stellar team. You can see that over in uh, Cardano as well. Notice it says here, powered by Stricka. You can get more information. It'll tell you. So it basically just gives you more information about the teams that are working on these different cryptocurrencies from within Ledger Live. Now, the other big question that I always get is, why does my Bitcoin wallet always give me a new address? Now, when we go to one of our Bitcoin accounts, and we choose receive, it's gonna generate an address for us. And every time it does this, it's going to be a different address. Uh, so why does the Bitcoin wallet always generate a brand new address? I covered this in one of my previous videos. It's built into the Bitcoin protocol to improve your privacy. So every time a new address is generated, and you use that address to receive some crypto, the only thing that shows on the blockchain record is that one transaction. Now, you can reuse addresses if you want to, but that decreases your privacy because anyone can look up this address on the blockchain. So if you've given this address to someone to send you Bitcoin, you don't want them seeing your whole transaction history. And that's why the Bitcoin addresses always change. Now, uh, can you reuse the addresses? Of course, you can reuse the address over and over again, depending on the situation. So if you're on an exchange and you have an address whitelisted for your own wallet, it's perfectly fine to reuse that address over and over again. All right. The exchange has a record of all your withdrawals anyway, so you're not really giving up any privacy when you reuse that type of address. But if you want a friend to send you some Bitcoin, it's better to generate a fresh address. Now, the next question is uh, related to that, and that is, why does my Ethereum address stay the same? So every time you go into your Ethereum address, 
to receive Ethereum, you're going to get the exact same address every time. This is just the way the Ethereum network works. You're, once you've established an Ethereum wallet, it's always going to generate the same address. The same with your ERC-20 tokens. So if you've got some ERC-20 tokens and you uh, do a receive on those, you want to deposit some more uh, ERC-20 tokens, they'll always be the same address over and over again. It never changes. It's just the way the Ethereum network works. Now, another question that I get is, can you generate a receiving address without having the device attached? And the answer to that is yes. It's not really uber secure to do that, but it is reasonably secure. So if I have my device attached and I choose to receive some Bitcoin, right? Notice that Ledger Live generates the address and then I can confirm it on the device, right? I can look at my device and see that same address. But this is not necessary to generate the address. The wallet information saved in Ledger Live is the public facing part of the wallet, the public key and the public receiving addresses. So Ledger Live can generate those without having to have the device attached, right? I can just say I don't have my device and it'll generate the address for me, right? It doesn't need to check the device. So why do we need to check the device? Well, there are a couple of reasons why. One is if we do the hardware confirmation and we have the device attached, then we can be sure that uh, there's no malware or virus that's interfering with this information and generating false addresses for you, right? It's a confirmation on the hardware. Now, uh, the solution to that is make sure your computer's in tip-top shape and you've got virus protection and malware protection on your computer. If you've got all that, you shouldn't really be worried about false addresses getting generated. The other consideration is that sometimes people mess things up. They enter their PIN incorrectly and get somehow get the device reset, or they have more than one device, and then they get confused. They don't know which device is associated with which account. When you do this receive and confirmation, it is a confirmation not only that you don't have any uh, software hacks on your computer, but also that the device you're holding matches the account you're accessing. So when you get a message telling you that something went wrong, you may have the wrong device attached, you may have the device in the wrong configuration, all of that sort of stuff will show up when you do that hardware con confirmation. But if you're confident that the account you're using and the a device you have are a match, then there's really no reason to go through that whole confirmation process every single time. Now, another big one that I get is, uh, for example, uh, if you go over to your cryptocurrency exchange, right, you get your uh, address of your wallet, You've got your device attached, everything's uh, confirmed, you get the address and you go over to your exchange to make your withdrawal. And then uh, you uh, initiate your withdrawal. All right, and the Bitcoin has been withdrawn from your exchange and is on its way to your wallet. And then you're over here at your wallet waiting with bated breath for your Bitcoin deposit to come into your own wallet and you wonder, is it okay to uh, disconnect the device? Well, the answer is yes. It's perfectly fine to disconnect the device. The device does not need to be connected in order to receive crypto. Just like I mentioned earlier, we don't even need the device attached when we generate the receiving address. You can receive crypto all day long without that device attached. In fact, once you've initiated that transfer, you can quit Ledger Live, turn off your computer, and go to sleep. The Bitcoin only moves from one blockchain address to another, so you don't need to have your computer on at all to receive Bitcoin into your wallet, right? It's always going to be out there on the blockchain. The wallet is basically just the window to blockchain addresses. So don't need the device attached. Don't need Ledger Live to be running. 
You don't even need your computer to be on. Notice there that that Bitcoin just arrived in my wallet, even though the device wasn't attached. All right, and then the biggest one of all that I get from people is what happens to the crypto when it's in my wallet and the price goes up, right? I'm not sure. Uh, I get this question a lot. Somehow people think that when uh, crypto is in your wallet that somehow it's disconnected from the rest of the world. It's not. If the price of Bitcoin goes up while the Bitcoin is in your wallet, then the value of the Bitcoin in your wallet goes up, right? And so what happens? Do I want to sell it? Sure, if you want to sell it, just transfer it back to an exchange and cash out. It's the same concept with gold, right? Let's say you buy some gold coins from a coin dealer and then you take it home and hide it under your bed. What happens when the price of gold rises? Are the coins under your bed worth more? Well, of course they are. That's common sense, right? You just take those coins back to the dealer and sell them at the higher price. The same goes for Bitcoin or any crypto that you're storing in your own wallet. If the price goes up, the coins are worth more, right? You can send them back to an exchange and cash out. Also, this may not apply to everyone, but if you have a Cardano wallet that has tokens inside it, I've signed up for some Cardano airdrops. Notice this token here, uh, this HI token, uh, the pricing is way off, right? It's telling me it's worth $51,000. It's not. This is an incorrect price. I thought that the update may have fixed this issue, but it did not. So if you have any uh, Cardano tokens in your uh, ADA wallet that are showing up incorrectly, I know it seems like you just struck it rich, but these prices are incorrect. The only solution that I found is to take these tokens and send them to an, uh, a different wallet that's not connected to my ledger device. So I have an eternal wallet over here that is not connected to my ledger device, and I can send these tokens over to that wallet so that they don't show up in my ledger live. I know this is kind of a pain. It might not affect most people because there's uh, not that many of us out there are uh, collecting uh, Cardano airdrops, right? But you may have some Cardano tokens in your Cardano wallet that are not showing up uh, correctly price-wise. So the only solution that I've found is to just send them to a different wallet that's not associated with my ledger. I admit it's not a very elegant solution, but I don't like to see incorrect prices showing up in my portfolio. All right. And then you'll notice there that my uh, portfolio is way off. This uh, Cardano token was showing up as incorrect pricing. But once I do a refresh, I just sent that token off to a different wallet. And there we go. Yeah. Once I sent out that uh, errant uh, Cardano token, my portfolio adjusted properly and it's back the way it should be. So like I said, it doesn't affect all of us uh, because not everybody is holding Cardano and those people who are holding Cardano uh, may not even have any Cardano tokens. But for those of us who uh, have a Cardano wallet uh, associated with our ledger device and have some tokens stored in there, uh, the prices might be showing up incorrectly. The only solution is to move them out. I've tried hiding the tokens. That doesn't seem to work. So hopefully uh, Ledger will address this issue in coming updates. So if you have any other questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.